This is subscription drop 3 of Thinking Particles. In this video we will talk about the additions we did to our new fluid flow solver. Before we do this, let's drop some fluids first. In this animation we have a rigid body interacting with a fluid simulation and the other way around. This is one thing that can be done with our new fluid solver. It's really stable and can achieve these kind of effects. Or how about real-time setups with real scale, real timing, real gravity. High gravity forces and our fluid is still stable and settles nicely. Also violent fluid simulations are possible now with a lot of splashing going on. Or how about two fluids mixing and sloshing in a container and separating due to different density values. Or very smooth and soft flowing fluids that create really amazing looking surfaces. That's also easy to achieve with our new additions we did to the fluid operator. Let's hop into the scene and see how we can adjust the new settings and how we can control the new fluid solver. Before we do this, let's have a look how we did the setup for the scene. The first thing we did is we create the particles. Our particle emitter is just a simple position born. The second dynamic set takes care of the simulation and the force, the gravity force. The th the third dynamic set we have here is the surface dynamic set that would create a surface with our new implicit shape operator. However, for this video we don't need it, so we have deactivated this implicit shape operator. You can see the dynamic set is deactivated because it's grayed out. Let's select the flow group operator for now. The flow group operator holds all the parameters we need for our fluid simulations. Before we do some adjustments, let me just move the window to the side. And then we can talk about the additions we've made to the flow operator. There's now a type selector that lets you choose between the old version and the new version of the flow solver. We suggest that you use the SPH2 6.3 solver from now on. Before we dive deep into the parameters we want to explain, let's just play back the simulation. Keep in mind this simulation is in real time, it's not cached, it's doing it on the fly in the 3D Studio Max viewport. When the second container overflows, you will see one particle falling down. And let's talk about this situation. That's happening very often. You cannot really control every individual particle in the fluid simulation. There's many areas where this can happen. And there's also many reasons for it. As I mentioned, you really cannot control those isolated particles. Sometimes the pressure is too high, sometimes the pressure is too low, or there's a leak or whatever. It happens. So. How can you adjust this? We created these new two parameters that allow you to get rid of these isolated particles. There's isolation kill and density kill. Those new parameters help you a lot in avoiding this. So in this situation, I would just set it to a value of two. And this means if there's less than two neighbors, we will kill the particle. So it's a very simple, easy to control parameter. But it's very powerful because it avoids these spray or stray particles that can cause a lot of trouble, especially when you are working with a surfacer. Those particles usually shoot out in space and then you are in trouble. So we've adjusted it to an isolation kill factor of two. And that means less than two neighbors, we will kill the particle and it's gone. The particle is gone. Now let's overdo the effect and I'll set it to 10. So less than 10 neighbors, we will kill all the particles. And when the container overflows, you will see that this extreme value 
is killing all the particles until our flow is high enough so that we get more than 10 neighbors. So be careful with the isolation kill parameter. It can easily change your fluid simulation. So I'll have it at four for now. The next parameter is density kill. It's also a very powerful parameter. Let's start with 0.4. The density kill parameter is really looking at the density values of your fluid. And as you can see right now, it is a very powerful parameter. It's killing off a lot of particles in our simulation. You can see that in the emitter animation or for now, we don't even reach the third container. So we killed off way too many particles based on the density value. So let's put it 2.2. Now we should be able to uh, reach our lower part. And you know what? Let's just right go to a sweet spot of 0.1 and uh, isolation kill of six. This will give us a nice smooth animation. We won't have so many stray particles on the sides of our flow when it overflows. And it will give us a nice connected surface. Still, there's a few drops and splashes, but that's also happening in, in nature. So those are the two new parameters and you can use them on both solvers, on the old one and the new one. There's also solver specific parameters that only work with our new SPH2 solver. They're in their own group in the dialog. And whenever you choose the old solver, we grade those parameters out because you can't use them with the old solver. The first parameter I would like to talk about is the space of force. The space of force allows us to control the power to move close particles away from each other. So it keeps the minimum distance and it uses a force to keep this distance. You see right from the emitter, it's a really strong parameter. And whenever particles get close to each other to fulfill the incompressible uh, rule, it adds this force. So here as well, you have to be careful with these parameters and settings. Go easy. I'll use 0.02 and you see it's adding a little bit of surface movement. So we get these nice ripples on the surface, but it doesn't explode. So that's a really powerful and nice new parameter you can control in our new solver. Another new feature we have added to our new SPH2 solver and we are really proud of is the pressure compress parameter. This is fantastic. It's amazing. One parameter lets you choose between ocean surface or a wine glass surface. You can define the fluid or how violent or lively the fluid should be. The higher this number, the smoother the fluid is. The lower this number, the more violent the fluid will respond to pressure changes in the fluid itself. So I'll put it to one and let's just run this animation a little bit. And you see every drop in the fluid will create a nice ripple and wave effect. So every pressure change when it drops into the fluid will create splashes. So you can create really nice ocean like surfaces. A value of 2 will get us closer to what we actually want to see. It's still very life, lively in this surface, this fluid. However, we are getting there. It's still more ocean-like, so we get this sloshing and, and these waves and splashes in the surface. So if that were huge pools, we are, we are close to a, a behavior that would be right for a pool. However, these should be small bowls where the water flows in. So we have to increase the value a little bit more. Let's try the maximum value of 10 for this parameter. And that will give us the smoothest, most calm fluid. 
and this value will always try to calm down the fluid to take the uh, forces out as fast as possible but still keep the filling height of the fluid itself. It's now running smoothly and that's a good setting or parameter I think for this animation. So these are the new parameters and the pressure compress is the most amazing one. I really love this parameter because with one setting you can decide you want an ocean or you want a, a nice little small scale fluid. All the other parameters still work and you need to adjust them as well, like your density and decompress. But these new additions help you after you set up your density and everything else to decide how your fluid should respond. Let me put this back to a value of 2.5. So that will give us a little bit of, of life in the fluid flow. And let me just adjust the viewport so that we can look on top of the surface and you see these nice little ripples, fast ripples on the surface only. And it's spilling over to the other cup and down to the third cup. So that's a setting. I think that's really nice, looks good. Maybe a little bit too lively uh, still. We could uh, adjust the parameters with the fast playback in the viewport. It's no problem at all. We can adjust these parameters. And the great thing here, we are doing half frame simulation. And that's another great feature of our solver. There's no other solver on the market that is that stable with half frame simulation steps. You get nice fill height, stable fluids, and you can still use half frame simulation steps. So that gives you really fast results. And if you are in need of extra high end simulation, you can always turn up the subframe steps or the parameters in the flow solver itself. It's very flexible and powerful, so you can achieve the effects you want to achieve. This is the power of procedural fluid animation in thinking particles. Now let's have a look at the rendering again. Take a close look at the surface. We used our new implicit surface operator to create the fluid surface. It's super smooth. In Subscription Drop 3 we have enhanced it a lot. Take a look at the reflection on the surface. It's super smooth. It's an amazing new feature. Check out our other videos as well. Thanks for watching this video.